Clutch your pearls, my friends. Dior has once again reformulated their eyeshadow formula. Should you be concerned? Is it any good? Did they ruin it? Well, buckle up, friends, because we're about to get into it right now. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. As you can tell by the intro of this video, we are talking about big news. Dior has reformulated or re reformulated their eyeshadow formula. They redid the formula a couple of years ago. I really like it and I know a lot of you all really enjoy it as well. So I'm a little bit concerned. Did they ruin this formula? Why did they do it? So that's what I'm gonna be getting into in this video. We're about to get real scientific. This is gonna be a little bit of an analysis of sorts. I'm gonna be using the Dior Soft Cashmere Palette, which is arguably one of Dior's most popular palettes. And I'm gonna let you know which is better, the old formula or the new formula. We're gonna do some swatches, dig into the ingredients. I have a demonstration for you all. And then at the end, I'm gonna let you guys know if I think the new formula is any good. So if you wanna hear more about that, then keep watching. All right, party people, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Sophia. I am a complete luxury beauty addict. I upload videos every single week on brands like Dior, Chanel, Tom Ford, a lot of Sephora brands as well. So if you love chatting about makeup, then you're in the right place, my friend. Hit that subscribe button to join our fam. I'm gonna be linking everything that I mentioned in this video and anything that is on my face today in that description box down below. Also, I know that a lot of you guys are interested in me reviewing some of the new colorways that Dior has released in this new formula. This video is gonna be focusing specifically on the formula and my thoughts on whether or not it's good, but make sure you are subscribed to my channel and following me on Instagram because I am going to be uploading reviews of some of those new colorways within the next week. So please stay tuned for that. But enough of that, let's get into the review here, friends. A lot of you have been asking me, why is Dior reformulating their eyeshadows? Or a better question would be, why is Dior reformulating all of their products? Because one by one over the past year or two, they have slowly been reformulating most of the products in their lineup. And the reason that they're doing this is because Dior wants to be a clean beauty brand. Whatever that means to you, whatever that means to them, they are trying to be very squarely in that clean beauty category. And there's been like some interesting discussion between a lot of folks in the beauty community. I read a lot of your comments all the time on my videos and on Instagram. And a lot of folks are saying, you know, luxury shoppers, they don't want this. We don't want you ruining our formula. Just keep things as it is. But the fact of the matter is, friends, that whether or not you like it, Dior is doing this because it's a business opportunity. They're doing it for a reason. There is some sort of business strategy here. They wanna be a clean beauty brand. And so for those of us out there that love Dior, this is just sort of like a fact that we have to live with. Couple of immediate differences and similarities to chat about. The price is basically the same. These used to be $60 US, then they were 62, now they're 65, but Dior has not increased the price on these. I also wanna mention that you're getting the same amount of product. It's made in France, just like it was before. And also interestingly enough, the shelf life is the same. These always had a six month shelf life, which I thought was a little bit short. I use them past six months, but that is just me. Dior recommends this as a six month shelf life and the new ones are exactly the same. Now, something that is different about these is the packaging and I'll show you guys the differences here. The components aren't all that different in terms of luxe feel and quality, but you will notice that they've sort of changed the logo here to what I guess is like the more modern Dior logo that they're using in a lot of their you know fashion and jewelry accessories, that kind of stuff. So the logo is different. Also, you can see that the pans are just slightly different not really that much and the embossing is also a little bit different. I would say that the biggest difference here is just the way that these little compacts open and close. So see right here on the old one, there's almost like a little button that you press and the compact opens up. Whereas on the new one, there really isn't a little button. You kind of have to grasp it and then open it. It's not really a bother for me, but I do think it is harder to open. Let's take a look at the ingredients. How are they different? The first thing that I noticed when I was touching, feeling, playing around, swatching these shadows is that they have a very powdery feel, more powdery than the original formula. I feel like more product kind of comes off onto my finger in a little bit more of like a clumpy manner compared to the old formula. I'll show you guys some images so you kind of know what I'm talking about. And the reason for that is because 
they have substituted the talc that was in the old formula now for cornstarch. And I'm seeing this a lot in the clean beauty space and with other brands that have been reformulating their products to be talc free. A lot of them are now using cornstarch. And if you've ever felt cornstarch from your kitchen pantry, you will know how sort of powdery and like dusty and finely milled that feels. Sometimes if you aren't careful, you can kind of make a little bit of a mess in your kitchen. That's what this feels like. And just in general, you know, dipping my hands into some of the shades, especially the ones that are a little bit more metallic, they do feel softer. I feel like more comes onto my finger. And I'll show you guys a side by side here to maybe describe a little bit more what I mean. I have here the old soft cashmere and the new soft cashmere. I just got the new soft cashmere and you can already see right there in the center shade that the embossing is almost worn away after just you know a couple sessions of swatching and one demonstration it's already worn away because the formulation is a little bit more powdery and softer to the touch you're wearing away more at a quicker pace one of the things that i want to call out as well is that when you have kind of a more finely milled product like this when the formulation's a little bit dustier you are more susceptible to hard pan i pretty much almost immediately got hard pan i'll show you guys a close-up on this new palette right here granted you know i'm washing my hands in between all of the swatches that i'm doing and so sometimes my fingers might be a little bit damp and so that is something i want to warn you all about if you are going back and forth between the palette and maybe your eyelid that has some eye primer on it maybe it hasn't fully set down or it's a little bit more of a sticky formula these are going to be probably more prone to getting that hard pan and they really are not the kind of shadows that i would recommend using wet at least not every single shade in this palette reading the description from the dior website it says that these shadows are enriched with aloe vera and pine oil to smooth and soften the lids while delivering rich and radiant color that being said, I took a look at the ingredients for the old shadows and they have those two ingredients as well. And those are both higher up on the list. I also want to mention friends that these are not vegan. I took a look and I did see Carmine listen in some of the shades as well. Both of the formulations use corn flour extract that has anti-inflammatory properties. It's actually used in a lot of eye care products used to treat things like conjunctivitis, so that is good. One ingredient that is no longer in here is safflower seed oil, which is also gentle and anti-inflammatory. I think in general, I'm not seeing as many emollients at the top of the list for this formulation. And I think that's maybe why, in addition to the addition of the cornstarch, that this formula is a little bit softer to the touch and more powdery. I also took a look at the preservatives. This is usually a big one when it comes to clean beauty. A lot of you tell me, you know what, Sophia, I don't mind clean beauty. I don't have anything against it, of course. It's just normally that with clean beauty, they omit a lot of the preservatives that we have in other products that really gives them that longevity. And so as a result, they do tend to expire quicker. Taking a look at the ingredients that they took out, it looks like the main thing they took out is sorbic acid, and they replaced that with two other types of preservatives. Sorbic acid is actually a naturally occurring compound, and it is FDA approved to put in our foods. So it's a very common food preservative. We probably eat it all of the time, but apparently, I don't know, apparently it's not clean according to Dior. I am not a cosmetic chemist, but based off my research, what I'm noticing is that they took out the sorbic acid and they did replace it with what seems like sort of less effective preservatives, ones that you usually have to use together to really get the full effect. So it doesn't mean that the preservatives are less or that they are worse but it does mean that they are different and it does mean that maybe they decided to change them to something that is considered, you know, more safe on somebody's scale. I'm not really sure. Comment down below if you have a little bit more information about sorbic acid. So all of this is to say, friends, is that the main differences are the fact that they swapped out the talc for the cornstarch, which is definitely giving a different texture for me, in addition to swapping out the preservatives. They still have the pine oil and the aloe vera. There were a couple of other things that they took out, but they really didn't add anything else necessarily beneficial to this new formulation. Let's compare the old formula and the new formula with some swatch comparisons. First off, I want to show you a quick side-by-side -side of the old soft cashmere and the new soft cashmere. They look 
pretty much the same, right? They really don't look too, too different. Now let me show you the swatches of the new soft cashmere just to kind of show you what it looks like. Seems pretty similar, right? Same undertone, same colors. Now let me show you the side-by-side -side with the old formula on the left and the new formula on the right. Do you see some differences here? Let's go through it swatch by swatch. The swatch that is at the top, that is my favorite shade in the palette. It's one of the best shades out of all of my Dior Quints. The texture is somewhat similar, but they did change it. The color is a little bit lighter, and I also think that the shine and the shimmer that you get from this shade it's a little bit less impactful. Moving on to the second shade that is in the palette, which is that topper shade, I also really noticed that you really don't get as much pigmentation from this topper. I'm not able to pick up as much pigment on my finger, so I feel like that one is also less pigmented. Moving on to the center shade and the bottom left, these look more similar. I definitely think that the experience of swatching these shades is different. The new formula, I pick up more product onto my finger. And I do think that the old formula does a little bit better of a job of kind of smoothing out the lines on my hands. It's really subtle. You guys have to comment down below. Let me know what you think. I think that the pigmentation and the depth is the same at the end of the day. Finally, I think the biggest difference of this palette is that matte shade that is in the bottom right, that cocoa brown. The one in the older formula is much more pigmented, deeper, richer, and smoother. I really don't care for the brown in the new shade. It swatches very patchy. It doesn't blend out as well. I would say that the biggest difference that I'm seeing with this new formula is that the matte shades, they are not as smooth. They're just not as smooth. They don't have that satiny feel they do have more of a chalky feel to them. Similarly, friends, now we need to demo both of these palettes. I'm going to be applying the new palette to this side of my face, which is the left side for you, and then I'm gonna be applying the old palette to the right side of my face so that we can compare them apples to apples. So let's get into this demo. The first thing that I did is with each palette, I went into the center shade and I used that in the crease. I actually thought that both of these applied very well. They're both very smooth. And I also think that the color and the tone between each of the palettes is very much the same. The second thing that I did, once again, very important step because this is my favorite shade in the palette. I went in with the beautiful shimmering platinum shade, first with the new palette and then with the second palette. And like I said, what I'm seeing here is a subtle difference between the shine and the sheen and the impact that you get from the newer palette. Then I went back into that center shade and I applied that along the lower lash line to start building up the eye look. Next up, I used the bottom left gray shade, which is kind of like a satiny formula, and I applied that to the outer half of the lid with a fluffy brush. I also feel like this one applies pretty well, and I think between both palettes, it looks pretty similar. Like I said during the swatch comparisons, I think that center shade, sort of like the satiny shades, they end up looking pretty, pretty similar on the eye, even though they feel a little bit different. The next thing I did was go into the chocolate brown matte shades, and I used a pointy brush and just tried to build up some depth in the outer half of the eye, kind of defining the outer V. When using the matte shade from the new palette, I didn't think that it was bad. I didn't think it was super patchy and harder to work with, but I did notice that the matte from the older palette, I did kind of feel like it blended itself. I felt like it just kind of went on a little bit more easily. Maybe that's just me. You guys will have to let me know if you think that side looks a little bit more blended, but that was my experience. And then finally, I went into the topper shade. I applied that to the center of the eyelid on both eyes, and I also applied it to the inner corner. And like I mentioned before, I do feel like it's a little bit easier to pick up the pigment in the older palette. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people like to pick up a little bit less pigment, but that was my experience is that it's a little bit easier to get some of those sparkles onto the brush and onto my inner corner with the older formula. Before I apply mascara, I do wanna show you all a side-by-side -side of what the eye look looks like before I put on the rest of the look. This is with just the eye shadow, no eyeliner or anything. Comment down below and let me know what you think the difference is between these shadows. I was a little bit worried that maybe I was being biased here, so I did go and ask my boyfriend what he thought the difference was between each of these looks, and he did respond saying that he thought the eye that had the older formula looked 
shinier and a little bit more pigmented. That was his response. So I wanted to share that with you guys as well. I'm interested to hear what you all think. And finally, friends, I applied some chocolate brown liner, some mascara, and this is the final look. This is the look that I'm wearing today. Tell me, can you tell the difference between these? I think that they look pretty similar, but like I said, I do think there are some subtle differences. I also want to mention here that along with this reformulation, Dior has also launched these new eyeliners. These are the Dior Show On Stage Crayons, and that is the eyeliner that I use. It is a little smudgy on one end and then the pencil on the other end. So I will talk a little bit more of my final thoughts about this formulation, but I used the brown shade for this look. All right, friends, are you still with me? Now it is time for my final thoughts. What do I think of the new formula? Did they completely ruin it? Should you pick up any of the new palettes? Well, friends, I don't think that this is a bad formula. I really don't. I don't think that they ruined it, but I must be honest, I don't like it as much as the other formula. I think that as far as a lot of the satin shades go, so for example, this shade and this shade in the palette, I think that more or less they kind of perform exactly the same. I do think that you might use it up a little bit more quickly and it might be a little bit more susceptible to hard pan. So I do want to mention that. If we're talking about the toppers, the more high shine metallics and the mattes, I don't think that they perform as well, at least to my preference, okay? Everybody has different makeup preferences, so it's totally okay if we disagree. But for me, I really like the impact that I get from this shade in the old palette. I don't think that the new one looks that much different, but I think that you guys can see here in the natural light, hopefully you can tell that this one it just pops a little bit more than this one right here. And the Dior shadows have already been criticized as being like way too soft and not pigmented enough. So I'm curious to see what the general, you know, makeup community and luxury consumers out there think. A lot of luxury consumers like a softer formula. So I don't want to come out here and say that it's not as good or it's worse or they ruined it. I think it might just be for a different consumer, if you guys understand what I'm saying. For what it's worth, I did do a blind poll on my Instagram asking you guys which side of the hand swatches you preferred. 65% of you said you liked the old formulation swatches better, and 35% of you said you liked the new one. So there's definitely some folks that like the look of the newer, softer formula. When it comes to the mattes, that's where I have a little bit more concern. I'm gonna have to play around with some of the other palettes I got to kind of see if there's consistency between the formulations and between the different colors. But this right here is a brown and browns are not very hard to formulate at all. It should be the easiest color to formulate. And this one right here, it is just not as good as the older formula. Y'all saw that swatch. It looked patchy, okay? It looked patchy. When I applied it to the eye, it was a lot better. I can't say that it was bad. But I can't say that it's a luxury formula necessarily. So that's my biggest concern. I'm just letting you know what I think right off the bat. Having used many different Dior eyeshadow quints, I think I have maybe 20 quints in my collection right now. That has been my experience with this so far. I've been reading as many comments on Instagram as I can to kind of get different perceptions and opinions here. I have seen some people say that they thought that this formula was more creamy than the other formula. I actually would disagree. I think we use the word creamy a lot in the makeup community. And I think sometimes we use that word to describe something as being very velvety and smooth. But I actually think that these are less creamy. I think that they are more powdery. They still have a really soft, velvety feel that I think is going to look good on both young and mature eyelids. But for me, creamy is something that has a higher oil content, which I don't really get from these. Something like a Danessa Myricks Multichrome pigment, for example. Those are super creamy. They have a lot of emolliency to them. And I don't think that I would say that for these shadows. You could even see right there as I was swatching it, there was some excess powder that I had to smooth out. I wouldn't describe these as creamy, but again, that's not a negative. If you have something that's more powdery, a lot of times it's easier to blend out. And then lastly, friends, it's clear that the colors do not quite match up exactly. So if you were hoping to maybe pick up a palette that you were interested in before, 
just know there might be some slight differences. So my recommendation here is watch as many reviews as you can. Watch different reviewers who have different preferences. Watch reviews for the specific palettes that you want to pick up because I do think that there's going to be probably different opinions depending on the color story. So I am interested in reviewing the other colorways that I picked out. And if you're interested in these, pick up one. Pick up one that you don't already have. Test out that formula. Don't buy five new colors that would if you did that's totally fine but this would just be my recommendation for those of you who are maybe a little bit hesitant out there I don't think it's a bad formula I don't it's just I do prefer the older formula so that is my opinion I also want to give you guys my quick opinion on the new eyeliners these are really nice they are expensive as you know it's a luxury brand it's Dior so that's what we expect but these are really nice. They're supposed to be waterproof and I can tell they're going to be long wearing because I did do a little swatch test. I'll show you guys a clip here. You can see that when you first draw these on, they're very creamy and blendable as you can see by the swatch that I had blended out. I thought they were very easy to work with. They glided across the eye, blended in very smoothly. But as you can see by the second swatch that is on my arm that has been sitting there for just a couple minutes, you cannot rub it off. It does not budge. These are going to be very, very long wearing. They're a little bit creamier, I think, than the Chanel. They have, you know, a thicker tip. I think these would be better if maybe you wanted something that you can blend out because they have the smudger. Whereas the Chanel formulation, it's very small and precise. So if you want a long wearing precise line, maybe go for the Chanel. I want to let you guys know, this is also a really good product and I'm waiting for the white shade to come in stock because not all the colors were in stock when I went to order it. All right, friends, that's all I got for you today. I hope that this review was helpful for you. Now it is your turn to sound off in those comments down below and let me know what you think. How else can I be helpful? What else would you like to see me review from Dior? Make sure you are subscribed to my channel if you wanna see more content like this. And if you wanna see my upcoming reviews of both the Khaki palette and the Rose Tool palette, let me know what other palettes in this range you want me to review and I'd be happy to do that. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And with that friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.